In 2017, one of the most broken expansions got released. Death Knights became a thing and increased the power level by a lot. We got Shadow Reaper Anduin, which made Raza Priest a tier 1 deck. Jaina to summon life-stealing elementals, Gul'dan to resummon entire bots, Rexa to make midrange hunter viable, and Morabi. Yeah, one of those does not fit in here. Despite the fact that we get tons of broken cards in this expansion, we also get the worst deck archetype in Hearthstone history. Freeze Shaman was born and died the very second it was played and ranked. I like to think to myself that one of the worst legendaries with synergy ever made has to be Gazlo. Technically, you get a bunch of random max to your hand, but you first have to spend 6 mana to get a water elemental, and then also have to spend mana with spare parts preferably to get something random. But that changed today we got Morabi. It is not just a lot harder to freeze things, but also a lot harder to gain value from that. While the mech archetype had synergy between cards, freeze effects really only have around 3 cards that benefit from something being frozen. But before we go on, let's take a look at all the cards we had available during the release of Knights of the Frozen Thorn that have a freeze effect that we could use back then. And I guess we can also change the background color to, to blue because it's, it's freeze shaman time. First we got Frost Shock, which did see play in Maligos Shaman to deal 6 damage face. Burlock is a decent 2 drop, usually in Murloc Shaman. Cryostasis, a card that some people played in Even Shaman to buff totems before we had Totemic Search. Avalanche, as a spell that stalls the game a little and only makes sense on a controller midrange deck. Voodoo Hexer to have LA Armor Smith, but it freezes. Icebreaker to be poisonous against frozen minions. The one weapon in the game that makes sense to play with freeze effects. Morabi as our value generation, I guess. Frost Elemental, this is just bad. Hilnir Frost Rider, you can freeze your own bot to gain plus one attack compared to Spider Tank, with a small downside that your entire bot is frozen. And that is actually it. Those are the freeze effects that we could play back then when Morabi got released. And it's already clear why this won't work. Let's see if face anyone playing an aggressive deck. What do you do? You play one card per turn and then eventually you die. But if somebody plays a control deck, this could technically work. Right? Yeah, well, not, not really. Any card run in a control deck either gives you value or removes things on the enemy's field or just helps you to stall the game. So while Free Shaman has Morabi for value generation, there is nothing else that deck does. It doesn't do anything else besides that. So what you pay 6 mana for gets destroyed by any 3 drop and that's your value. But let's talk about what the deck is supposed to do in theory. So you got a bunch of cards that can freeze things, Morabi to get a bit of value, and you get some taunt minions that also freeze things. You get Icebreaker as a weapon, that can destroy any frozen minion, and you have Avalanche, so that, that does not seem like it's going to accomplish anything, right? Usually when you play a deck, it either has something like an explosive start, a clear win condition, or a game plan. Like when you play a control deck, for example, you know that you would like to remove anything your opponent plays and eventually just win because you have more value. So what I want to say is, there's no gold that I haven't freeze shunned. Like, you can freeze things, but that doesn't lead you anywhere. Like, there's nothing that is supposed to happen at a given time. There's no early game, outside of maybe playing like two different cards. Your mid game consists of maybe slowing the enemy down. And your end game is... I'm not sure. You get a copy of a minion because of Morabi? That doesn't seem like a good end game. While all those cards don't really synergize that well in Freeze Shaman, there must be cards in the game that have some freeze effects that would actually make sense to run in this, if we were allowed to pick any card in the game. And well, all those cards aren't mage. If you think back to the first world championship, to the time Wreckform is lethal at BlizzCon, and to this sound, Aha! what deck comes to mind? Freeze Mage. This deck worked so well because you had your clear win condition, and a detailed way of playing the deck. You know that from turn 1 on, you have to draw all your important cards like Alexstrasza, Archmage Antonidas, as well as Frostbot and Icelands to close out the game, while staying alive with cards like Blizzard, Frostnova and Doomsayer. You can even play quite risky, as long as Icebreak is up. All the freeze effects in Mage like Nova, Blizzard and even just Water Elemental as a solid 4 drop made it so that the archetype became a tier 1 deck. In addition to that, we had that win condition that Freeze Shaman is missing. Yes, of course you can play Burlock and Cryo Stasis, but that does not win your games. That starts the game and maybe makes a minion bigger, so the question is, which cards that are Mage exclusive would be needed for Shaman to have an actual freeze stack that works? Well, if I think back to the win condition of Freeze Mage, it's to deal a lot of damage face at the very end of the game. So you could compare this to Maligos Shaman, which has a very similar game plan. You stall in the beginning, you draw a bunch of cards, you summon Maligos, and then you just point face. If you had Mage cards available, you could use cards like Ray of Frost, Frost Nova and Blizzard to just make this a lot easier to accomplish. But to be fair, in Shaman we do have bot clears, they just don't freeze. We have Hecatha's Scheme and Volcano, for example. We have Lightning Storm and Earthquake. But none of those have any freeze synergy or effect. All we would do is wait until we get Maligas and Ancestor's Call in our hand, use Ancestor's Call, then use those spells face, and end up winning. And while that would make sense, it's just another way of winning the game with an OTK. There's no real mid game, there's no real I play those cards and they interact with the bot. So let's imagine we would have cards like Icicle or Cold Wrath, or even just a Cryomancer. 
available for Freeze Shaman. Because those cards, they all would make sense. You can freeze and draw, you can draw if something is frozen, and you get plus two plus two. Those would be at least cards that have some benefit when something is frozen. But for Freeze Shaman itself, besides Icebreaker, the moment something is frozen, nothing happens. It's not like you gain anything from that, it just means the minion can't attack. Next we will need some spells to gain back tempo. Similar to Rogue having sap against big minions, we should maybe have a card that is like a combination of silence and freeze. Think about some of the silence cards. We had Keep of the Grove, which then got nerfed. We had Iron Big Owl, which then got nerfed. We had Spellbreaker, which is now Hall of Fame. But then out of nowhere we get a card called Consume Magic, which is a silence and a draw effect. For one mana. Which makes Demon Hunter really good against anything that plays a taunt minion. So imagine a broken card of that level, with a freeze effect mixed in. That would be a card that we would need to have to make Freeze Shaman at least somewhat viable. It could also just need some normal card draw, like imagine Cram Session. Instead of drawing based on how much spell damage you have, you could just draw based on how many things are frozen. Think about spell stuns. They upgrade every single time you do something. In Shaman we have the Overload spell stun that summons copies, for I have no idea what. Imagine we had a freeze spell stun that has some I don't know what effect, but that upgrades when stuff is frozen. Galakrond upgrades, spell stuns upgrade, Nothing that is frozen ever upgrades, so maybe that won't make sense. Now let's talk about why the deck just doesn't work. Since the release of Knights of the Frozen Throne, the only new cards that have free synergy are Invocation of Frost, which you only played to invoke Galakrond and summon a 2 1 with Rush, Frozen Shadow Weaver, which is your Glacial Shard and Burlock, but only saw play in Odd Demon Hunter to freeze other Demon Hunters. Ice Cream Peddler to gain like 8 armor every single time the battle cry happens, which you only played in Shadowbox Shaman to gain infinite armor. And well, th that was it. We, we got 3 cards for that. It has been 3 years and we got 3 cards that have freeze effects or synergy. Wow. We even got an anti synergy card. It's called Living Dragon Breath. So even if the bot would be frozen, you can just play Living Dragon Breath and your stuff is unfrozen. Maybe Blizzard saw that Free Shaman would be too good without Living Dragon Breath, so they had to nerf it. It's obviously the only reason that it doesn't work. Without Living Dragon Breath, Freeze Shaman would be tier 1. If we compare the evolution of Freeze Shaman to, let's say, Discard Warlock, we can clearly see why this deck doesn't work. But Discard Warlock became a really good deck. When the discard mechanic was pushed for the first time during Angora, we get things like Lakari's Sacrifice, Clutch Mother Zavis, Lakari's Fairland, and even the Greatest Dynamancer. Before that, we also had cards like Marcus's Imp as well as Silverware Golem in Karazhan, and some classic cards like Sofa and Doomguard. But when Ashes of Outland got released, we had a strong draw card with Hand of Godan, and a perfect way to target that through Nightshade Metron. Or in other words, a deck that almost worked, got the broken cards it needed, so it can work. And that is exactly what is missing in Freeze Shaman. Not a single card in here is broken, or feels unfair. They are all mediocre at best, and even when Invocation of Galakrond was like 1 mana, Galakrond Shaman became too good, and it got nerfed to 2 mana. Now imagine this. In the next expansion, Blizzard decides to not just print a couple freeze cards, but a couple broken freeze effects. And then out of nowhere also, decrease the cost of some of the freeze cards we already have. Morabi could be a 3 mana minion, which it should be because it's that bad, board case could also freeze, or maybe a different effect. What about the start of game effects from Ganon Baku, that has the effect that freeze effects last twice as long. Instead of things being frozen for one round, they could be frozen for two rounds. So when you freeze an enemy minion, they can't attack for two rounds. Meaning when you get a bot clear, it is twice as efficient. Or to change things up a lot, what if we are just an alternate hero power when you play X amount of freeze cards? Like our hero power does not even synergize at all. We summon totems. What do totems have to do with freeze effects? Nothing. Something needs to happen to make this archetype ever work. But after three years now, it doesn't seem to happen. Nonetheless, I tried to make freeze shaman work and this is how it turned out. The way the deck is built was to include as many freeze cards as possible, and as you will see in a second, we get rid of as many freeze effects as possible. The problem is, we need to have a win condition. If a deck is aggressive, the win condition is to go face. If a deck is a combo deck or a control deck, you need to somewhat get value or have a clear combo. And in our case, I just put in some freeze effects and made a deck that is called Hostage Shaman. The idea behind the deck is you play Doppelgangst and Grumble to get your Shadowbox back to your hand. You have the quest so it happens twice. And you have some freeze effects like the Frost Rider to freeze your own bot and then get 8 armor due to Ice Cream Peddler. You run Glacial Shard to freeze enemy minions. And you also play the Undertaker, which makes it so that double play the beetle will be the death rattle of Shadowbox, and when it dies or gets back to your hand, you gain 6 armor. That in itself makes it so that you get like 100-200 armor each, which in other words means every single time you play Shadowbox, you have more than 6 times your normal health. Now the only way to skip animations in the game is to quit the game and then relock. So if your opponent doesn't do that, you really have to wait for like 6 to 8 minutes until the enemy can do their turn. And well, we did that. That took forever. And after 57 minutes, the opponent left. During the game, we also got Morabi value. So while you can see our hand being full of 1 mana cost shadow box, what about you get two 9 cost shadow box? That, that, wow. 
Yeah, Robbie Value. So after opponent had so much fun watching all these animations, I think it's clear to say that you can just safely disenchant Morabi. Out of pure interest, I was looking back at old set reviews from Amaz and Reynard and wanted to see how well they rate Morabi and other freeze cards. And here's how Amaz and Reynard rated Morabi three years ago. To me, it looks like a bad card that wants you to play other bad cards in your deck, and that's kind of the hallmark of a card that's not really going to see play ever. I would dust this guy the second you open him, but uh, yeah, I think his card's pretty awful, so I don't, I don't expect it to see much play. Is that even good? Man, that's a six mana four four draw card. Oh, this is bad. Even draw. Oh no, this is zero stars. This is terrible. Oh, right, this is actually terrible. I don't, I don't want this. I don't want this in my deck. Okay, pass. In the end, it really seems like this is by far the worst archetype Blizzard ever made and then abandoned. And I'm just left here wondering, why did they make that in the first place? Like, when they have the idea to make freeze cards work, or have freeze synergy and shaman, they have to be at least multiple sets that build onto that. Like when we had Cthun, we only had one set for the old gods. But the entire theme is, old gods, Cthun is one of them, buff Cthun, half Cthun. We never had any more support cards for that, but it already worked with the cards that were given. If something didn't work, like let's say elementals, we had a bunch of elementals in Angoro. When Discard Warlock didn't work, we got some broken Discard cards. When Freeze Shaman didn't work, we just forgot about that and moved on. Well, those are all questions I have no answers for. But there's one thing for sure. If you do happen to have Morabi in some of the Freeze cards from Knights of the Frozen Throne, and you want to play for fun, maybe you can try to make Freeze Shaman work. Like just a normal mid-range deck that plays maybe aggressive and just use the Freeze effects to stall, but someone includes Morabi to make it a viable deck. If you find a deck that works, I would have to see your deck list. Like maybe there's a hidden tier 1 deck that nobody ever played. Or it isn't, that it very likely there is none. And with that I would say, thank you very much for watching. My name is Solom, bunch of yarn subbed, change that in one click, leave a like, cause why not? And this has been a pleasure. We stream over on Twitch a couple times a week, maybe you should put the whole self-promotion stuff at the very beginning before everybody leaves. And take care.